How's it going, guys? Uh, my name is Fabian Valdez. Um, I work here at the Tillery County Office of Education with the Choices Program. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, the knowing the risk, right, of a vape, all right? So this is a guide to help you guys out um, through um, education and within uh, vaping, e-cigarettes, right, and what we can do to prevent for as a prevention, right? Um, that's my goal today. Um, here's some topics that we're going to be talking today about. Um, the first one was going to be, uh, what are e-cigarettes, right? Um, get you guys some information for that. And second one is going to be, what are the health risks, right, behind e-cigarettes and vape? Okay, our third one is going to be, uh, what leads um, to e-cigarettes use, right? So how, how are uh, your kids your age getting involved and how are they um, getting access to this? Okay, and number four is, what, we, what can we do about it? And that's the ultimate goal, is uh, being leaders and in, in, um, lead the way in prevention, okay? So to start things off, I wanna start you guys off with a, a quick uh, video. It's called The Real Cost, um, and I hope you guys enjoy. There's an epidemic spreading. Scientists say it can change your brain. It can release dangerous chemicals like formaldehyde into your bloodstream. It can expose your lungs to acrolein, which can cause irreversible damage. It's not a parasite, not a virus, not an infection. It's vaping. I want you guys to understand the seriousness behind it. A quick ad for you guys um, and just get this uh, thing going, all right? So first off, I want to um, start off with um, no matter what you call it, it is an e-cigarette, right? Um, there's vapes, there's tanks. Um, what are, and there's a lot of different um, versions of what you guys um, give a name for it. Um, one of the main companies that we come across is the Jewel Company, right? And you guys um, call the pods that as well, okay? Here you'll see a dictionary definition of nicotine. We don't expect you to know uh, what all of these, all these things are, but it is, it is important to know the basic understandings of what nicotine is before you can understand why using an e-cigarette is risky, okay? Um, it is within our tobacco products, and that includes cigarettes, vapes, uh, chewless tobacco. Section number two, uh, what are the risks of using e-cigarettes? So we know what e-cigarettes are and, the nic and that they contain nicotine. So what? What does it matter? Right? So here's a quick video. Hope you guys understand it. Brain cells separated by space. So for them to communicate with one another, they have to send chemical messengers across those spaces. They're called neurotransmitters, and you have lots of them. There's dozens of them. One of them is called dopamine. Dopamine does a lot of things, but one of its responsibilities is it keeps you happy. Out here, you've just had a touchdown, and you've just asked somebody out to the prom, and they've said yes, or so you saw your father bought you a car, your mother and father bought you a car. Your dopamine's out here. But it's still within the normal range of what you can produce. And what does dopamine say? Well, dopamine is a very happy chemical. It says something that was immortalized in a song by James Brown, I feel good. What happens when you put an addictive drug in your body, like nicotine? Nicotine actually goes in and grabs onto this brain cell that's trying to talk. And it causes the brain cell to get very excited. And instead of releasing just three dopamines, it releases nine dopamines. So those dopamines go over here and they attack this brain cell. And they don't say, I feel good. They yell, I feel really good. Brains don't like yelling. Those little receptors, they don't like all that dopamine. So they grow earmuffs. Little earmuffs. So they muffle the sound of the dopamine. It can take you three months to six months to grow those earmuffs. It can take you 10 years to get rid of them after you've stopped using nicotine. That's why drug addiction is such a long-term change in your brain. You have altered the way those little ears are going to hear for decades. Because you've grown those earmuffs, the only way you can communicate is to have nicotine in your brain. So what happens when you don't have nicotine in your brain? You start to feel bad. And the only way you can feel good again is to put nicotine back up in your brain. You have changed the way your I feel good sits in your brain. And you can't feel good unless you have a drug in your body. So yeah, the importance of uh, dopamine, right? And what nicotine does to our body is that we tend to rely on it, right? So and that's why um, we're here today is I hope you guys understand that nicotine 
um, it's, it's just it's a long-term effect, right? It, it is a um, addictive uh, chemical, and it requires us to a long a long term. It takes a long time for us to um, get rid of that addiction. So if you don't know, a standard pack of cigarettes contains 20 uh, cigarettes. Okay, there is one milligram of nicotine absorption per cigarette. Um, so about 20 milligrams of nicotine in a whole pack. Unlike other e-juices though, um, which may or may not contain nicotine, all salt-based e-juice contains nicotine. So according to Joel Labs, uh, one Joel pod contains 41 0.3 milligrams of nicotine. This is the equal amount of nicotine you'll find about 40 cigarettes, okay? So how many packs of cigarettes would a jewel pod um, then be equal to? That's about two packs, okay? Two packs of, of cigarettes. As mentioned before, this is a high amount of nicotine. It can be very intense um, for the first time users. Our concern is that young people are being introduced to this amount of nicotine um, developing a tolerance quickly and becoming addicted uh, as addicted as a result okay so as you can see one seropod is 90 milligrams of nicotine 90 cigarettes okay that, that's that's tremendous quick quiz so now that we learned about the risk of nicotine let's talk about why it matters for your health so nicotine harms the brain development true or false that is true. Nicotine does harm brain development. Okay, remember, most e cigarettes contain nicotine, which is highly addictive. It can harm brain development. So, how does nicotine um, e cigarettes impact the brain? It can stunt our growth in our frontal lobe. It rewires our brain um, chemical addiction. And addiction to, nic um, to nicotine can begin the process of addiction to other drugs. So, it becomes like a gateway drug. Uh, youth who use nicotine can harm the parts of the brain that control attention, learning, mood, and our impulse control. So uh, keep in mind, guys, until about the age of 25, the brain is still growing. So we have to um, be mindful of what we put in our bodies and that, and that can um, um, harm us, right? And that can alter our, our development. So here's a quick video, and hopefully it helps you guys understand um, what this, what we're trying to explain, okay? Okay, all right. What kind of you said I don't want to talk about? Just wait, wait. Trey, Trey, what are you doing? Hey. Yes! Yes! Wait, what is going on with you? Get out! Andy! Get out of my room! Get out! Andy! What? you guys enjoyed that and understand the, the uh, severity of using um, vape and you know the causes the, of our mood swings with um, when we don't have nicotine okay so here's a quick uh, another uh, knowledge check um, these cigarettes create a harmless water vapor what do you guys think is that true or false that is false right so these cigarettes allow the users to ex uh, exhale clouds that that they may think they're just water vapor or harmless water vapor um, at that. So the tobacco industry, what they do is that they prefer the term vapor because it implies that it's very harmless. But in reality, um, e-cigarettes create what is called an aerosol, which is a mixture of particles um, in the air that can be harmful to your health. Okay, so e-cigarettes make aerosol, not vapor. One more time, e-cigarettes make aerosol, not vapor. Besides nicotine, these cigarette aerosol can contain cancer-causing chemicals, heavy metals, and ultra-fine particles that can be inhaled deeply into the lungs and harm your body. And even though e-cigarettes uh, aerosol generally contains fewer harm harmful chemicals than regular cigarettes, safer doesn't mean safe, right? So this applies that both people using e-cigarettes as well as people who may be exposed to secondhand aerosol from other people 
using these cigarettes, right? And by the way, those flavorings in these cigarettes aren't necessarily safe either. Your gut can handle a lot more than your lungs and flavorings in e-liquids or pods may not be safe when inhaled, okay? And this is what it looks like as an example of an aerosol, just like a hairspray. So what is third hand smoke, right? And this is another way that e-cigarettes and vape pens pose a danger to people other than smokers is through third hand smoke. And you may be, you may understand uh, or have understand the concept of secondhand smoke. How would you define secondhand smoke, right? Someone blows uh, smoke into the air and it gets, and someone else is, um, can smell it, right? That's secondhand smoke. Third hand smoke is someone blows smoke into the air, gets on the couch, on our shirts, on our floors, right? And on our ceilings, or our walls, okay? All right, so if potential poison wasn't enough to convince you, defective e-cigarette batteries have caused fires and explosions, right? And many people have been harmed by them. Um, most explosions happen when e-cigarette batteries are, are being charged. Here are some real life examples. And don't assume e-cigarette devices are safe, okay? And we can see people are blown up in their hands, their legs, and their mouth while they're using, and they can cause real harm to our bodies. So now we must ask, what leads to e-cigarette use, okay? Um, we know that e-cigarette use has increased among youth, particularly in the past year. But since 2014, e-cigarettes have been the most commonly used tobacco product among youth. In the United States, um, youth are about seven times more likely to use e-cigarettes than adults. But why is this happening? So youth exposure to e-cigarettes advertising is increasing, and the message comes in many different forms, whether it's store signs, television ads, um, within our movies, the internet, social media ads, which we have more access to right now during our quarantine time, um, magazines with cool images, our newspapers, it's all around us, right? So e-cigarettes ads reach nearly four in, uh, in five middle school middle and high school students and youth exposure to these ads has increased in recent years. So here's a few examples of how they're doing it. E-cigarettes marketing ads are using themes including sexual content, independence, rebellion, and celebrity uh, figures to appeal to youth and the young adults. Signs like this in the middle, right? Jewels sold here are popping up at gas stations and the convenience stores, making it seem like there's easy access to them, okay? So there are over 15,000 uh, different flavors, and their goal is to get you to uh, draw you in and try their products. So what they're gonna do is make packaging to look like similar to other products that, are, that you use or um, are consumed, okay? And their goal is to keep drawing you in by appealing with the flavors, um, colors, but changes are on their way. Starting January, California has signed into law Senate Bill 793 prohibiting the sale of most flavored tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes. And this is gonna be effective January 1st of 2021. So finally, what can you do about the problem of e-cigarettes? Be tobacco free, guys. Asking for help isn't weak, guys. So if you are using, right, um, it is a smart move to, to start quitting now. If you feel comfortable talking to a friend or adults you trust about wanting to quit, do so. It's normal for people, to, for people to slip up when they're trying to quit, okay? If you slip up, don't think of it as a failure. It just means that you wanna try quitting in a different way. Being prepared increases your chances of quitting successfully. Make a plan, stick to it, and keep trying to quit until you get it down, okay? And we have apps right here. This is a quitting app, right? Download this, and um, this is quitting app from the Truth Initiative. A teen app, smoke-free teen. <clears throat> Use the Quit Start app, right? Or ask for help. There's and you can text, right? Counselors, um, friends, family. Don't give up and make it a plan to quit, please. Make sure you avoid uh, secondhand smoke, right? Uh, secondhand aerosol, which known can be contain harmful ingredients. Don't let your friends or anyone, for that matter, smoke uh, or use e-cigarettes around you. You can also avoid restaurants and other locations that allow the use of tobacco products, including e-cigarettes. Lastly, spread the word and get involved, okay? Talk to your peers in the community and leaders about um, developing more education in your community and on your campuses about the dangers of e-cigarettes. If your friends 
if you have friends that are uh, smoking or using e-cigarettes, talk to them about quitting. Also, you can become an ambassador for the campaign of tobacco-free kids. Or um, what I've been recommending to some of my sites is become an ambassador on your campus. Create a group, right? Um, this leadership group is going to help so many kids and be the voice and lead the way to being vape free. So what did we learn today, right? Let's recap. So we learned what are what e-cigarettes are, what the health risks are, um, what leads to e-cigarette use, and what we can do about it. My hope um, is that you can take this onto your Kansas campus and friends around you and lead the way to living vape free. I appreciate you guys for your time and I hope you, hope you guys were able to take away a lot of stuff today and enjoy your day. Thank you.